said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. That was like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. No, that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more from the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get it things in mind, something wicked, no alibi <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome into LTL True Crime. It is Monday night. We're a little late on my schedule. I said I wanted to start at 8 p.m., but um, I was out. I was running a little bit late. So uh, we're here on the Monday schedule. A little 8.15, but next time I promise I'll try to make it here at 8 p.m. So we're here live on Monday, March 4th, 2024. And we'll welcome everybody in to the live show yes i know lots of lives going tonight sean is killing it over on his channel right now and i'm so happy that he has a channel up and running because i think he brings a lot to the table here in the free karen reed movement and the uh the karen reed case and bringing justice to john o'keefe just to let you know sean will be on my show third uh yeah thursday night at 7 p.m uh we're gonna do probably about two hours here so uh, we're going to have a great show lined up there. I actually just spoke to him today uh, for the first time via phone. We've we've messaged a lot uh, through email and stuff in text message view time, but I actually had full conversation with him today, which was awesome. And um, he's uh, he's killing it over there. So we're going to show lined up on Thursday for, again, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Can't wait for Sean to join me. And we're going to have a lot of fun over here. We have a lot of things that we're going to go through, of course. And I think it's about time that him and I kind of collided and did a stream together. So 
it's funny how this stream tonight is all going to work out. It's going to be kind of a precursor to his stream. And I found that out uh, in conversation today. So I want to give some context to what happened here. So early on Sunday, a viewer reached out to me and sent me a link to a podcast. And the podcast is called The Outlier Podcast. And the young lady's name that runs that is uh, Laura Conlon. And she does post in the Justice Group. So I got this uh, link and I looked at it and was like, wow, body language expert. I was like, Janine Driver. Wow, I got to really listen to this. So started to listen to it, sat down, started taking notes. And I said, wow, this would be really fantastic to bring up on the on my show to play it and review it and go over it. And so before I did that, I reached out to Laura on uh, Twitter, just private messenger. She got right back to me. We had a full conversation about Karen Reed and the Karen Reed trial uh, and all the hearings that have been going on, of course, all the craziness that's gone on. And I asked her, I said, hey, do you mind if I play your episode uh, on my channel? I want to go over it, review it and um, react to it. She said, no, it's no problem. I said, I'll give you tons of credit. I'll drop your link at the end. I'll leave it down in my description. She's no problem at all. And also I gave her a formal uh, invitation to join the show if she ever wants to come on and talk. So I said, gee, if it was so easy to talk to, to Lauren, I wonder if I can get in touch with Janine. So I reached out to Janine. I dropped her an email on Sunday and she got back to me right away. And I was like, hey, I heard you on the Outlier podcast. I heard that you did a segment of the Karen Reed case. I would love for you to come over here and do a segment on my channel. Let's do this. I'll compile a bunch of videos. We can go through it on, on the live and walk through it. And you can you know, give us your opinion about body language. She said, oh, it sounds like a fantastic idea. So I set the schedule. Uh, we were going to plan to meet next Monday. And I ended up talking to Sean today and Sean goes, oh, I'm having Janine on my channel tomorrow. I said, no big deal. How about we do this? I'll pause with Janine. When the hearing or the trial, if we get to that point, I'd love her to come back and let's do a three-way panel. Me, you, and Janine together we will walk through and do some body language um, if this goes to trial. Because I would love for her to break down the witnesses on the stand, uh, Karen's. Um, body language, Lally, just everybody, Jackson, Yanetti, everybody. So he's like, I think that's a great idea. So he's going to speak to Janine tomorrow night, uh, pre his show, talk to her about that certain scenario. If this does go to trial and we'll end up working that out. So, uh, kudos to Sean. That's awesome that you got her over there. Uh, Janine over there. And, uh, I look forward to having a conversation down the road with her, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll do that. So tomorrow night, if you're looking for, uh, Janine, he's, she actually going to be a special guest on Sean's show. And, uh, I think it's going to be really exciting, but tonight what I wanted to do is go through this podcast night it is an audio podcast. It's about an hour, but it's very, 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 very interesting. And I think that, um, you're going to find a lot of value in this because the cool thing about this, it's going to be a precursor to Sean's show tomorrow. So this actually lined up perfectly. And Sean was like, I said, Sean, at the end of my stream, I'm going to send everybody over. I'll send the link to your stream tomorrow. You're going to have Janine there. People are going to be able to see Janine and get a natural reaction uh, from her. So this is a great precursor to that. I'm super excited um, for Sean's show tomorrow. And like I said, we'll do this. And I want to thank Laura, uh, Lauren for allowing me to do this uh, on, <clears throat> on my podcast here today. And, uh, and play through this. It was very sweet. She said she didn't have a problem. And I said, I'll promote you. I'll drop your link and anytime. So Lauren, if you're watching, you want to come on LTL True Crime, I'd love to have you here because you've done an amazing job and you've had great guests on your podcast. Uh, so far, what I've seen is probably five or six episodes on Karen Reed's case and you're doing a great job. So fantastic stuff over there. All right. Before we get into uh, the podcast tonight, I want to show you the picture that basically broke the internet. Yes, it's the picture that broke the internet. Uh, lots of engagement on this. I think in the justice group, it has over 600 likes on it. It's ki it's killing Twitter right now. I have the trolls all coming after me. Tons of discussion. But I wanted to bring this up because I was out on a date the other night and we walked and we were walking by and uh, my date turned to me and she said, uh, hey, look at that. And I thought it was really funny because we were making my way to my car. And I said, Oh God, this is a perfect uh, scenario for me to take a picture because I am 
I'm about six foot tall, uh, 213 pounds. From my understanding, uh, John O'Keefe is about an inch taller, maybe two inches taller, uh, a little bigger than me, a little bit more body weight, maybe 10, 10 pounds heavier. But my purpose of all this, and of course I had a troll that was coming at me that I suppose was posting this because I want all these ladies come at me. No, that's not the point, moron. The point is I wanted to show a perspective as to how my body would line up to Alexis uh, Alexis 5 LX570. And you can see, and I wish I would have taken the photo out a little bit more to the bumper, but my point is, and I wrote in the post, I'm six foot, 213 pounds. And from what I know with John, John is one inch taller and a few pounds heavier than me. There's no way in hell that if Karen Reed hit John, he would have suffered injuries, uh, the injuries that he did. There would have been some sort of upper body injury to his chest, ribs, or sternum. So I said thoughts. Then I went back and edited it a little while. I said, this is the same model Lexus that Karen Reed owns, just obviously different color. So if you look, the bumper would have hit I hit first. That is the most protruding piece, uh, back piece of that vehicle. I mean, you can clearly see it up next to my body. Uh, the bumper would have hit the lower leg. Uh, and there would have been, even if it just hit up in the chest area, there would have been an arm, an arm, uh, arm bruising or a chest, or it would have been soft tissue injuries. And all we have obviously are dog bites on John's arm. So, um, I wanted to give it some scale. Again, it's a little bit different when you're there in person, you're actually seeing it, but this is something that I want to go over with Sean on Thursday. And I think it'll be great for him to, uh, <laughs> I think it would be great for him to, um, go through this with me and I'll just draw some arrows and we can talk a little bit more in depth about this. But I love the engagement on this, even on the LTL page, it had about 178 uh, likes on it. Thank you so much for doing that. And then all the engagement uh, on the justice page, because it literally blew up. And on Twitter, the trolls are having a field day with this. So I did my job. And this is what I wanted to, to point out is uh, those injuries just don't, they don't add up and it wouldn't, it just doesn't make sense. So this is definitely something I'm going to bring up with Sean on uh, Thursday. So again, I thought it was great. I said it was a great opportunity. I'm I'm a person about fate. You know, things happen for a reason. It put us there in that moment, at that absolute moment. So uh, we want to take the photo and, and go through it. <laughs> no bashing the photographer. Yes, no bashing the photographer. All right. Um, okay, so let's go through this podcast. And let me cue this up. Oh, I cannot wait to play this. This is so great. Okay, from again, this is from the Outlier Podcast. Please go over to and subscribe. I'm going to drop the link to this specific episode inside the chat if you want to go over and subscribe there and um, uh, give Lauren a uh, subscribe or just check out her uh, podcast. Let's get some reviews on it, some likes on it. And, and Lauren, if you're watching, I appreciate you allowing me to go through this because this is a great warm up and pre uh, precursor to Sean's um, live tomorrow. All right, here we go. Let's play through this. With a bonus episode regarding the Karen Reed case and the tragic killing of John O'Keefe. And I'm still planning to have another guest weigh in on this case, who is a former criminal defense attorney. And when I have him on next week, we will get back into the documents and I will start asking him more specific questions about the actual evidence. But today you're in for a treat. I have Janine Driver, body language expert who has also been called a human lie detector. So she is a speaker, a TED Talk speaker. She's an author. She's been featured on Live with Kelly and Mark, The Today Show, Fox News, CNN, everywhere. She's literally everywhere. And she is very, yeah, let, very thorough. Let everybody know too, uh, Lauren's some spots on uh, news, uh, I think news, news nation. She's done spots on Fox. Um, so she's done things with Jesse Waters. So she's, um, she's really great. Very good independent journalist. 
All right, let's I gave here. her a bunch of clips and very I, nice. I thought she wasn't super very, very familiar nice. with the case, but it turns out she is a bit familiar. So just keep that in mind. And she calls me out. She's like, you said that I wasn't familiar at all. And I actually am a bit familiar. And she's actually from Massachusetts as well. And she says something at the beginning of our interview that was so crazy. Something that Bill Burr Whoa. said years ago or decades ago about the Canton police because he's from Canton. I guess it's like a known thing that they're just a little bit shady. Uh, but yeah, you'll, you'll hear her her mention that. It's pretty interesting. But anyway, I gave Janine the same clips that I gave to uh, Jesus Enrique Rosas, the other body language expert I used. So it was the Nightline clip. It's Karen outside of the courthouse, the 911 call. But I also added uh, a clip of... Jen McCabe and Matt McCabe that Aiden Carney took outside of the courthouse. It, it's a few people, um, but I wanted her to zero in on Jen McCabe's body language, which begins around the 35 second mark. And I also uh, have that clip in the episode notes. So you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to play it here because Jen doesn't actually speak. It's Aiden uh, just kind of asking them questions as they're walking out of the courthouse. And yeah, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, probably intrusive to have the press yell in your face, but the McCabe's didn't really come off as anyone who seemed concerned with anything really. Um, but I will, I will have <clears throat> Janine talk about that as the expert. And I also just sent her a bunch of clips of Karen in court. And what she does is she kind of tells me like, you can't really hone in on one thing that she does. You have to look at the big picture and she's just really helpful when it comes to that. And, and this is, this is really helpful information for your everyday life as well. And before I get into the interview with Janine, I want to just correct something I said on the last episode pertaining to... So I want to make sure that people understand this. Janine uh, doesn't really follow this case in depth. She was just asked, you know, she knows a little bit about it. She does get a few things wrong. So let's give Janine some credit. She does many, many talk, uh, conversations across... Uh, the country. So she's very busy. And I thought it was very sweet when she said, sure, I'll come on the, the show. But knowing Sean's going to have her tomorrow night, it's kind of silly to have her next week. But I said, let's do this. Let's work out something. Maybe she can come back, me, Sean, and Janine together, and we can do uh, a great episode. But um, she does get a few things wrong, which is fine. I mean, there's a lot of details in these cases. It's not the only case that she probably breaks down. People probably ask her all the time to break things down. You know, her expertise is body language. That's why she's here, to read someone's overall demeanor, their body language, the way they act, the way they walk, the way they talk, and give her expert opinion. So let's please keep that in mind. All right, let's keep playing through here. With this case, I stated that no officers entered the house at 34 Fairview. Well, one police officer actually did enter the house. I just didn't think they treated it like a crime scene. Uh, so I just wanted to correct myself. And yeah, sure, maybe they didn't have to treat it like a crime scene at the time because the death Could was outside, but I still... It, it that I don't agree. And and again, you know, I think that it, it absolutely 1,000% should have been... Uh, uh, treated as a crime scene right away. This should have been crime scene tape. And these are a lot of things that me and Sean are going to talk about on Thursday as well, too. Um, absolutely should have been a crime scene immediately. I mean, you have a boss, you have a Boston dead Boston police officer in the front lawn. Yeah, it doesn't sit right with me. But anyway, let's just play my interview with Janine. And keep in mind, yeah, she is an Very expert nice. on human behavior. And something right I away. did not mention um, was that she also is former law enforcement and she's a former ATF agent. I should have probably said that earlier. But yes, that's really helpful to know going into this. Right off the bat, let's just talk about Karen Reed in the courtroom with her attorneys. I mean, hey Paul, the last to see hearing, there was a lot of laughing um, that was going on. There was some smiling. Uh, I thought I saw at one point her mouth the word liar to her lawyers talking about somebody. I mean, it was kind of funny. Uh, but just what what are your thoughts just right off the bat? Well, first of all, I follow the case a little bit. It's not like I'm oh, just coming you. in and not knowing who she is. Uh, right. I am from Boston. Uh, well, Waltham, Mass, Northwest of Boston. And sidebar, Canton police are kind of, you know, there's a reputation out there. There's a stand-up comedian from Boston named Bill Burr. He's from Canton, and he's made jokes about how crooked the police are decades ago. 
decades ago, way before this case, go get the Bill Burr joke about what it's like being in Canton and what's up with the Canton police. So let's go there a little bit. But what I do is even if you're not a body language expert, I think it's hysterical that that it's divided. Mm-hmm. By the way, I retired from law enforcement, ATF. I spent 18 years with ATF. I trained I trained the Massachusetts Police Department last year under a big, huge grant. So wow. I work in law enforcement. And the fact that people are divided is shocking to me because if you just simply watch, I mean, forget about looking at the evidence for the love of God. I mean, if you just look at every single scratch and bruise on, on Kevin O'Keefe, there's a silent testimony. Gone. Yeah. I mean, so again, you know, let's give Janine some slack. Like I said, she doesn't, follow this case you know in depth she's probably asked to analyze a million cases and a million you know body language so uh you know it, it, listen all we want is her expertise and again this is going to be a great warm-up for sean's uh live interview with janine tomorrow um it just was weird how this all worked out again if you're just coming in i was supposed to have janine on next monday but I had a conversation with Sean on the golf today. Ooh, my voice! Oh, my voice cracked. I had a I had a uh, conversation with Sean uh, on the golf today, and he said, "Hey, I'm having Janine tomorrow." I said, "Oh no, I'm supposed to have her next Monday." But I had the stream planned anyway for a warm up for next week. But that's cool. Sean and I are going to get together on Thursday, and then we're going to have Janine again uh, at some point down the future if this goes to trial, because I think it'd be great to analyze a lot of the witness testimony, the body language, Karen, Lally, everybody in the courtroom, Jackson, Yanetti, Little, I think it'd be really great. So we'll keep playing through this. I think you're going to still find a lot of value in this. All right, let's go. John, John, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. See, I don't know all the details. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you just prove, but if you look at all the all the, the the scratches on John, you can see there's this silent testimony, you know, waiting to be heard that indicates Karen Reed is might be likely telling the truth. Now, for me, I'm not super into all the nitty gritty because I'm not a lawyer. I'm not making case. I'm looking at the nonverbals and I'm listening to word choices. And I think if you turn off the camera. And you don't, I mean, not turn off the microphone and you only a look at the evidence, B look at even Karen Reed in court before the the kind of laughing and some of the levity. But if you look at her throughout the whole entire case, this is the problem. You can't, it's hard to pull out one scene and think, you know, everything. I remember on American Idol, there was this one part and I I do this in my corporate class. Okay. I'm going to explain this really clearly again. Okay. So what happened was, and if you missed the beginning of the show, um, on Sunday, someone passed me this podcast. Uh, Lori is a, a viewer of the show. She said, hey, I thought you would find this very interesting because you've been talking about a body language expert. I said, this is great. I think this would be great to go through. So Sunday, what I did was I reached out to uh, Lauren. She is the host of this podcast. This is her independent podcast. Got her on Twitter. And I said, hey, you have a fantastic episode. You've been following the Karen Reed case very closely. You have a lot of great guests. Listen, I'm looking to do a body language expert. I'd love to hear an expertise on that. I said, do you mind if I play your podcast? She said, I have no problem with it. I said, great. If you ever want to come on the show, let me know. I'd love to have you over here and, you know, talk Karen Reed. She said, great. So I, in my mind, I said, well, why don't I just reach out to Janine myself? Wrote her an email on Sunday. She literally got right back to me. I said, Janine, I'd love to have you come on the show and let's do some live visual videos. I think it'd be really great if you could break them down live for the, uh, for the audience. She said, great idea. I have XXX date open. I'm not free those days. So I said, why don't we do next Monday, meaning the following week, next Monday? Well, uh, what I found out today, I talked to Sean because we were prepping for our show together on Thursday. He's going to come over on my channel on Thursday. And we started talking about body language. And he said, oh, I'm having a body language expert on Tuesday, meaning tomorrow. Well, who is it? It's Janine Driver. I went, oh, no, I'm supposed to have her on my show the following Monday. And I said, no problem. I said, because I was going to use this as a, a pre warm up. So if you're going to watch Sean tomorrow, this is going to be great for you. You're going to want to listen to the rest of this. But I said, why don't we do this? I'll pre warm it up for you. I'll send everybody, I'll drop the link to your stream tomorrow. So Janine's going to be with Sean tomorrow. And I said, down the road, how about the three of us get together and we'll do a stream together and talk about this? I said, I think that's a great idea. So it all worked out. I'm happy. He's happy. And I'm sure Janine's going to be happy. All right, let's play through. As I show J-Lo, J-Lo is like horrified. She's shaking her head. She looks pissed off to the 10th power. She's watching some singer. She looks pissed. No problem. And if you just took those 20 seconds, 
you would think JLo was pissed at the singer. Mm -hmm. But what you find out 30 seconds later is JLo runs to the stage and she hugs the performer and she said, I've never heard someone sing this song any better than the original performer. This was unbelievable. I had goosebumps. But if you look at just that tiny piece, then it looks like right. she's angry. So okay. you are you want to, if you're reading body language, look at the whole entire big picture. So with that being done, ideally we want to get a baseline of someone. And it's hard to do in these situations because you may not know, you know, Karen Reed or or John and mm -hmm. their scenario and all their friends and all the people involved. But let's talk about Karen Reed. Karen Reed's body language is congruent, in my expert opinion, training. Millions of people on, on TV shows from Court TV, CNN, Fox, the Today Show, Rachel Ray, Dr. O, you name them, is Karen Reed is not guilty. And here is why. If you look at Karen Reed's body language, it is a couple things. Number one, it's congruent. When she, she is upset about something, her body language is saying she's upset. It's okay. If she, for, by the way, we smile and we laugh. I say he, 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 H, E, E, he, he, he. When we're happy, when we're embarrassed, and when we are evil, we want to get away with something. There was a murderer. He killed his uh, wife and young daughter in Massachusetts, ironically, years ago. And he was laughing in court when they put the baby's onesie in front of the court. It was horrifying. It was horrifying. And oh that, was, that was pure evil. Neil Entwistle was his name. So if you look at if you look at Karen Reed and you get a, 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 an opportunity to hear what's being said in the courtroom and then look at her at the same time, her mm -hmm. body language is congruent with someone who's telling the truth. I want to I want to give you a big one that you see a lot with Karen Reed okay. right out of the gate. We, we see it anytime evidence is being, you know, tried to be put against her, which is it, it, to me, it, this is now again, you got to keep in mind. There's nothing in this for Janine. She could have analyzed this, came back to Lauren and said, Karen Reed is 1000% guilty. And this is why. In my expert opinion, this is why. All Lauren did was send some videos to her and said, can you analyze these? And let's have you on the show and give you your, th and give you your expert thoughts. So keep that in mind. This is not like, you know, hey, can you just? Do it? She's giving her expert opinion. She's giving her expert opinion. It's going to be a big movie, for, by the way, I think. Yeah, right. Really, it's unbelievable. I mean, mm -hmm. agreed. How does the guy get two black eyes and, and a bunch of scratch marks all over his eye? I mean, just turn off the sound and look at what's in front of your face, mm -hmm. and you already know Karen Reed is innocent. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal Karen Reed does this thing like this. I don't know if you're going to use the clip of me or not, but yeah, I'm pushing like you're blowing a kiss to someone. Yes, people listening, she's doing a kissy face, like a yeah, yeah. kind of doing okay. this kissy face. If you're listening, where you pucker your lips, I like to say you can't unsee, unhear, unexperience what we're talking about, Lauren. So you at home who are listening, or if you happen to be able to see this video, uh, do what we're, what I'm talking to you about because when you do it and you see it in someone else, you'd be like, oh, that body language check. Okay, Sean is going to have Janine Driver on her on on her on his channel tomorrow. Okay? I'm going to have Sean on my channel on Thursday at 7 p.m. So Sean will be here Thursday 7 p.m. Janine will be on Sean's channel tomorrow. I had it lined up to have Janine next Monday. Sean and I didn't know. <laughs> Sean and I had no idea until we talked today. And I said we were talking about body language and he said, I'm having a body language expert tomorrow. So who are you having? Janine Driver. I went, holy shit. <laughs> so I'm supposed to have her next Monday. So I said, why don't we do this? I was planning to do this stream anyway. I'll warm everybody up so everybody can get a sense of who Janine is. And then tomorrow you have a live. And then maybe down the road, all three of us can get together and we'll have a live together. He said, I think it sounds great. So. Um, and I'm going to drop Sean's link to Janine's stream tomorrow. I'll drop that at the end of this stream. So you guys can all click on that, set up your reminders. All right, let's get through this. We got a little while to go here. I get why that means this, because I do that move when this is happening. Mm -hmm. So if you pucker your lips, now sometimes we do that to be cute in a selfie. <laughs> we saw Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, the great you know deceased basketball player. Kobe Bryant would do this on the court all the time. 
What does it mean when someone is naturally doing it, which we see Karen Reed do throughout this trial, anytime someone is trying to contradict what they, what her attorney is representing, or someone's trying to say that she, she did it. This pursing of the lips that comes out in this lip kissy thing is I disagree with something or I'm thinking of Thank an you. I appreciate that. So Thank let's go back to Kobe Bryant really quick. If you imagine Kobe Bryant running back and forth up the basketball, um, uh, up the basketball court, and they he missed a ball or someone missed a ball or a bad pass was made, mm -hmm. you would see Kobe Bryant do that with the lips out, that pouty lips. This is, I either disagree with what just happened. It shouldn't have yeah. happened this way. It should have went a different way. There's no reason we should have got, we shouldn't have sunk that back. Let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to drop Sean's link at the end of the stream. Let's get through my stream. Okay. Just let's do that. Don't worry. I'm going to give you Sean's link at the end. Let's get through this stream. Okay. We'll get through the stream. I will drop Sean's link at the end. Let's get right there. Yeah. If you're in a meeting and you see someone doing this. Sure. Or on a date, I can show you Karen thinking... what she's talking about. And this is what I always say about the media when they try to paint her in this negative light uh, with the, the faces that they like to capture her uh, having. And let me give you an instant. Um, so a face. This is what she's talking about. Let me get into the, let me see this face here. This with the lips out being very engaged, thinking, probably saying lots of bullshit here. They're saying that's basically what they're talking about so that's the face that they're talking about there um you know referring to let's see here's uh Let's see. Hang on a second. Hang on. I want to show you the Kobe Bryant face she was talking about. Let's see. Kobe was always known to do this. I always remember that face, you know, with the lip sticking out like this. That lip, that bottom lip. That's what she was talking about. All right, let's go back to Janine. Here we go. Have an alternative. They're thinking, mm, you don't really look like your picture. Sorry, that's yeah. actually really funny. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you 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 put someone on Hinge or Match or whatever Bumble, <laughs> and the person sitting there and they're doing that first thing lifts like they're blowing you a kiss. They're literally thinking, uh, there's I could be out with anyone other than you." Wow, so they're disagreeing <laughs> with something like, and they're just being polite. They're not calling you out on the fact. Yeah, yeah. That you use your we well, damn like oh well no you use your pictures from 2019 you lost 100 pounds but during covid you gained 100 okay sister right right but, okay this is really interesting oh so god be, does this yeah. quite a bit and i even took some pictures more and for okay. you and again i don't know and I, i'm more than happy to send this to you if you want um but this this is oh, her, this, yes. this, this little pouty of the lip her head is also down and she's looking up kind of like in in trump's big photo yeah, yeah. That he did is his uh, rest mugshot. Here we see Karen Reed doing it again. So yep. these lips coming out. Disagreeing with something or thinking of alternative. When does she do it? She's not doing it when her lawyer is saying, here's what I think happened. She's not doing it when they're asking the judge, can you please let in the cell phone records <clears throat> about how someone Googled how long it takes to a uh, body Dialogue. to die up and cold? When is she doing it? When the judge says, no, I'm not allowing it in. I think so. Not when they're presenting their thoughts or their theory of what happened and how the whole thing is a setup. 
-hmm. And so it's congruent with what's happening in the courthouse, in the courtroom, uh, with someone who's telling the truth. One more big thing, and then I'll answer any questions you have. But in I was going to address this really quick. So Anne says, Brian, you have a strong independent podcast. Your opinion is valuable without linking to other podcasts. I enjoy your unique style. Please don't stress over linking up with others. Keep it strong. And listen, I, I appreciate that comment. It's very, very sweet. Um, you know, I just try to do my best here to try to help out the community. Like, I get it. Um, there's multiple streams that run on multiple nights now. You know, something here that I am not, you know, kind of predicating my channel around as much as I care about Karen and I care about her case and, and care about, uh, you know, justice for John O'Keefe. I don't predicate my channel around it. There are many other interests on this channel and that might not interest the, the crowd that comes in for these specific streams. It's it's not any I'm not trying to be a jerk or, about it or anything, but there are many interests that I, I have on this channel and I appreciate that. Um, you know, there are other things that I will do, but what I try to do is keep the community together. The people that I respect and the people that show me respect in return, I will help them out. Like I said, it was an easy conversation today when I was talking to Sean, you know, it was a simple mix up. He had no idea that I was going to have Janine next Monday. I had no idea he's going to have Janine on tomorrow. And I said, well, why don't we compromise? I'll do this tonight. You have Janine tomorrow, which I think is great. And then maybe down the road, we can all work together. That's what I've been trying to do here with all of the streamers to try to build a, a one-all community, um, you know, have uh, the respect to go on other channels, you know, share other links, get other people, other information out there, give them other perspectives to other creators. I, I don't have a problem doing that, but I give it back to people that show me respect. If you're a creator that shows me respect, I'm going to do the same thing for you, you know, and that's how it should work. My channel is very different. My channel is very, very different than uh, some of the other channels that follow this case. And I think that when you come here, you have an extremely different perspective of how I present things here. I like to be very factual. I like to be very visual. I probably won't get into a lot of the side stuff that maybe people really like to get into, but I like to just dive into the facts. I want to know what makes people tick. And what put them in those particular situations at those times? And does the evidence add up? Can we look at it in a broader spectrum? Spectrum. That's what you're going to get with me. Uh, I'm not going to really do drama stuff. I'm not going to do uh, just stuff like that. It's just not who I am. You know, it's not who I am. I have a clear, grander vision for what I can do with LTL. And yeah, of course, we have fun and we address things here. And um, but I, I take this case very serious. And, um, it's just, it's a huge injustice of what's going on here in Massachusetts. And I, and I always reference back, um, when I have conversations with Paul Christopher, he always says, you know, this could be you, this could be your daughter, this could be your son. Um, and it's true. It, or it could be any of us. It could be any of us. So again, you know, um, that's what I do. I just try to help people out. You know, and I want to build a, 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 a community of people that rally around this. And, you know, um, listen, I, I get my share of shit. People don't like me. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to like me. You don't have to watch. Uh, I get it, too, just like everybody else. But we're going to move on. We're not going to let anybody beat down our channel. And we're going to keep this community rolling. And, you know, uh, you might not watch me directly live. You might check it on replay, which is great. That's what I want people to do. That's why I do these streams. So anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the most important thing. Uh, we're going to get back to Janine Driver talking about some of the body language in the Karen Reed uh, case. All right, here we go. Yeah. Overview here. Yeah. The people at home is, and this is so interesting because I, I was just saying this yesterday to a friend of mine about this movement. When we that. are authentic, thanks. By the way, authenticity. Thank you. Forty thousand times stronger than love. Scientifically proven. So emotions emit energy. Okay. Authenticity is forty thousand times stronger than love. Now, people who don't like Karen Reed, <clears throat> she's a Boston girl. She talks fast. She's a straight shooter. Walks fast. She might be laughing in court, but she is authentic across the board. She mm. also is coming right out. By the way, liars don't say, liars do not say, I didn't kill him. 
I didn't kill him. I didn't do it. I'm being set up. They would say, liars would say, I didn't hurt him. I didn't purposely hurt him. I didn't cause harm to him. This is what they'll do is they dumb down the crime. A man mm. is being charged with rape. He doesn't, if he raped her, he doesn't say I didn't rape her. He says, I didn't force myself on her. I mm. didn't hurt her. So to, for someone to make a strong claim that I didn't do this, if you go back to Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp in the courtroom, we have Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Amber Heard's found to be a liar. Again, the way Amber Heard was lying is the way that we're seeing the Massachusetts police in Canton involved with this case lying. It is obvious to someone who's trained in this world. It's bad lying. It's bad acting. And wow. we heard who? Johnny Depp say flat out, I didn't do this. All right. I didn't Thank do you. that to Amber Heard. I didn't I didn't put this bottle inside in of her. House. I didn't. Do, and mm -hmm. flat out own it. And that's what we're looking for. Now, the, the point I wanted to make on body language with Karen Reed is authentic people, authenticity, 40,000 40, times stronger than love. Wow. Karen Reed, you may not like her personality. You may not like Boston people, right? We're, we're big, we're loud mouths, we're sarcastic, we're, we're, yeah. we're straight shooters. Yeah. Right? We just, we call a spade a spade. Yep. Karen Reed, how do we know when someone is authentic? You know by how they move their body. It's called integrated movement, PGM, posture, gesture, movements. Mm. The posture and the gestures move at the same time. So as I'm talking and as you're listening, Lauren, yeah, you might nod your head, yes, but your shoulders are also moving. I see your hand moving. I can even see your upper part of your chest moving while you're just nodding. Yeah. It's to me, you're an authentic person. We see um, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey was charged with, you know, having sex with minors. Yeah. And I, I was once behind him in a movie theater with Kevin Spacey. And I was like, oh, it was this big albino alligator, this really terrible movie. I didn't like it. Okay. And I'm <laughs> behind Kevin Spacey. I'm like, oh, shit, that's Kevin Spacey. And I'm like, my friends, well, I was in my 20s. My friends were smoking hot. And I'm like, oh. Maybe they'll invite us to like some after party, or whatever. Like smile. Your girlfriend. You know? you mean my girlfriend. Okay, yeah, my all right, girlfriends, yeah. Friends, right? I worked for ATF yeah. at the time at the World yeah, Trade yeah. Center. You're about oh. to learn. And so oh. my two, they're special agents, right? They're smoking hot. And I'm like, oh, maybe we'll get invited. Two rows behind us are young teenagers, 15, 16, 17. When the movie was over, Kevin Spacey whispered something to his like manager's thing ear got up, went two rows behind us, whispered to those kids, young boys, years earlier. So when this broke, I'm like, I knew this, I knew this. And when I was 25 years old in 1995. He is so when guilty. That's another story, another day. I'm so <laughs> upset. But again, Alan Jackson, that's how good Alan Jackson is, okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, this, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is why I wanted to bring up him, Kevin Spacey. He was then asked one time about, you know, having relationships with, with, with young boys. And in this whole interview, Kevin Spacey, who's an amazing actor, mm -hmm. is stiff as a board. He's answering questions. He's moving his head. There's no integrated movement. I go, he's a liar. When we are authentic, even if you're an introvert and you talk, if your hands are moving, they you shouldn't be like a robot, like I'm demonstrating now to you, Lauren, and if you mm -hmm. get this home. The, the, when your hands move, you have a natural bounce, integrated movement. And so why do I tell you this? Karen Reed whether she is talking on the steps of the courthouse, whether she is in the courtroom itself, has integrated movement, which is consistent with someone who's being authentic. And so we pile up all these little teeny parts of body language and word choices to use. It. Motion VIP, one of the OGs, this goes back a long way. Motion VIP with a $5, so you are the GOAT brother. I will have more time soon. It's been a crazy, it's been crazy at work. Mad love fam, it's okay, man. Hey, work, family first, all that stuff. I get it. I appreciate you coming in, dropping the five. Uh, thank you. You are OG, brother. You've been here for a long time. Thank you. It's good to see you. Hope everything is well. Is that uh, makes me believe, in my expert opinion, maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out. But I believe that she is being framed. Thank okay, so I, you. you know, uh, just a couple things really quick. And I, you know, I, this is my, I did not realize that you worked for the ATF. That's that um, picks this up a level, I feel like. One thing, um, you know, in terms of John's body, I agree with you. I think that it, 
it, to me, it didn't seem like um, his body matched really being hit by a car, just just upon these pictures and these photos. And, and um, but, you know, I had Dr. Henry Lee on who just kind of said, you can't really tell from photos. And then I had someone else on who kind of said, look, if you get hit in the back of the head, um, you know, that causes those panda eyes or those, you know, that I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I did just want to bring that up. But I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Um, okay. Sidebar. Yeah. All right. Please. Yeah, please. Sidebar to what you just said there. And, and, you know, no disrespect to Dr. Henry e. Lee. He's amazing. People don't know who he is. He's the guy that weighed in on the Jean Benet Ramsey case. And OJ. And they, yeah. Where the OJ Simpson case, all those cases. I have an autograph book by him here. I met him once. He's great. Yeah. And with that being said, okay, let's look at the co context of the whole situation. I'm retired law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what law enforcement does. We do help each other. We care about each other. We're hanging out with each other. We help each other. So you mean to tell me, Karen Reed backs up, hits him. He's there all night. Someone randomly happens to search, you know, how long you could live outside. Right. And, <laughs> or that. Yeah. Let's, you know, put that aside. Um, they have his phone being pinged inside the house, but the police are saying he was never inside the house. I mean, come on, let's, let's back this up. When they find him laying in the snow, mm -hmm. when Carrie gets there, why? And I think you're getting to the call. Why is she the only one screaming in a panic, trying to help him? Where Agreed. are the rest of the Great the point. I mean, this is- You've said that all along. No, too. you can swear. You can swear. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swearing, but where are the rest of the cops? I mean, for the love of God, it's interesting. Um, uh, uh, years ago, so there's- Federal law enforcement, other than the FBI, all federal law enforcement train at a place called FLETC, Federal mm -hmm. Law Enforcement Training Center. It's in Glencoe, Georgia. And there was a big hurricane coming to Georgia years ago. They have everyone leave the, the training facility, FLETC, Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, and to go further south down to Florida. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of the people, uh, a friend of mine, a special agent of Chicago, Sissy Bray, right? Sissy Bray is on her motorcycle. A guy in an 18-wheeler goes over to one lane, pushes Sissy into the median strip. She catapults off her bike and lands. Aww. Every single person evacuating Fletzy, all law enforcement, every single one stopped. As a matter of fact, not only did every single one stop, not one person followed the friggin' truck to get the license plate of the person who potentially just killed Sissy. And you're telling me that Karen Reed is the only one that's trying to to save this fallen guy who's in the snow. None of the cops come out. They're all mostly cops in there. None of the cops are coming out trying to help. I, no, you know, I, I said the this. library footage is missing. I mean, yeah, no, sorry. no. Oh, please. Yeah. I uh, trust me. All of all of these facts that you are um you are going through, we have discussed. Uh, and Jody, I, sorry I for your loss. You. I really do. Um Jody, sorry for your loss. I'm sorry about that. I uh, I, I argued with uh, my guest last week about like why Brian and Nicole Albert didn't go outside when Thanks. Karen Reed is screaming bloody murder saying, John, John. And then if you want to, you know, really quickly get to Jody's the 911 call. I mean, Jody, I'm, I, sorry. I'm sorry if you lost. I, like I, I had mentioned, I thought Jen McCabe sounded like she was just calling her kids school and reporting an absence or something. It sounded so strange to me, but please. Well, I, yeah. Tell me how you felt about that. Well, yeah, hundred percent. It's yeah. it, listen. I I hear. I listen to TikTok all the time. I have a TikTok channel myself, and and you hear the nine one one calls. You know, this is the difference between you get a you know hotshot lawyer in the Carolinas that slaughters his son and guns down his wife, and he calls the police, and he's just hanging out with the police when the police get there. So you know, mm -hmm. and yep. Yep. just so cavalier. That's the same thing that is happening here in that call with Jen McKay. So when we have a spike in stress and anxiety, our voice goes up. When we have fear, our voice goes up, right? So our voice goes mm. up. If you talk with a high voice way up here, it's it's actually not considered very powerful. But when we talk like this, it's it's unexpected. It's And it's not just someone just was found dead. I want you to imagine, Lauren, Oprah Winfrey just walked in my house and she goes, Hey, Lauren, I listen to both your podcasts. They're amazing. <laughs> Are you going to call your friends and be like, Oh yeah. I was anyway, interviewing Janine Driver's body language chick and Oprah came in and said, she listens to my podcast. You know, no, you hang up and you go, Oh, God. You're not yeah. gonna believe Oprah Winfrey. So our tone of voice goes up when we are in shock, when we get caught off guard. And that's what we hear with Karen Reed. We don't hear that with Jen McCabe with Jen McCabe. 
she's almost like, you know, I see this type of stuff all the day, all the time. She's not an EMT. She's not keeping everyone calm in the situation. Cause I've read feedback where people are like, well, you know, it's a good idea to stay calm. And, and are you kidding me? When there's thunder and lightning outside and your kids are outside, yeah, maybe the everyday person could be calm. Everyone, I need you to come on in. This is a dead body. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And that's that's exactly how I thought. So then just pivoting to Jen McCabe, uh, I sent you footage from about nine months ago. Uh, Aiden Carney was uh, asking Jen and her husband questions outside of the courthouse. And he's walking behind them. At some point, he gets up next to them. And I, I link this out in the episode notes for people to see. Um, her, her demeanor, her and her husband's demeanor, I felt like she didn't really care. Uh, she kind of crossed her arms a little bit. She kind of rolled her eyes. Um, but, and, and, you know, <laughs> he, he makes a, a comment about what they're wearing and their appearance as well, which was like, also interesting that they were wearing kind of like frayed jeans and flip flops to the courthouse. And that's another thing that I'm a little confused about why you would not show any type of risk. This is a really good point. I have to say, Lauren, really, this is really good. She honed on to something here. And I was like, oh, that's a really good point. And uh, let's let's back up 15 seconds and, and kind of hear what she says here. This was really, really good. And I never even thought of this. A comment about what they're wearing and their appearance as well, which was like also interesting that they were wearing kind of like frayed jeans and flip flops to the courthouse. And that's another thing that I'm a little confused about why you would not show any type of respect, respect. I guess. And, and, you know, sure, maybe it's, again, I'm from New Hampshire. I know we wear hoodies a lot and whatever, but it is, it is court. Um, so that whole exchange in general was just a little bit bizarre to me. Listen, this happens all the time when people feel that they are safe, that someone has their back, they become smug, mm. they become smug. Mm -hmm. And we see this often with someone who, well, we saw this with the Kavanaugh case where he gunned down his, his son and, and his wife, you know, mm -hmm. you see this like smugness. You, you even saw it when he was getting, going to get sentencing in the courtroom, the smugness, like, he came from a big lineage, big families, fathers, father, far lawyers. They run the Carolinas, you know, they have all this money. And so if in fact you are connected to law enforcement in Massachusetts, and if in fact you have maybe even, you know, lawyers, maybe even judges, who knows? Mm -hmm. this is, uh, and, and when I was in ATF, you know, ATF is, was charged with um, the whole Waco, Texas. Remember Waco? Yeah. Texas? And then when they see the supporters in the, in the, the uh, parking lot, Jody, they, they instigate and wave and smile at us and smirk. Remember, remember when we were out there and they were waving on the, in the last Karen hearing. Texas. Yeah, of course. Waco, Texas happened. David Koresh, ATF mm -hmm. had a, I was not part of that. I was new on with ATF. I was in New York city at the world trade center, but ATF had a search warrant because mm -hmm. David Koresh had, armor piercing ammunition and machine guns that weren't registered. So they had a search warrant. They had practiced over and over. They rebuilt this whole entire compound and practice mm. and practice, right? And I'm not here to debate what ATF did right or wrong, but what I want to okay. tell you- They yeah. waved at Don't me, worry. remember? Yeah. They were what I want to say me. is this. A couple people that were in charge of giving the green light to go in lied ultimately to Janet Reno. Okay, so they lied to Janet Reno. The big question Janet Reno had at that time was, do we still have the element of surprise? Do we still have the element of surprise? And these people, the head honchos that were running this operation said, yes, we still have the element of surprise. When they knew damn right well, we no longer had the element of surprise. How do we know that? Because someone in ATF leaked the story to the media. No one really knew who ATF was. We were mm -hmm. trying to get on the map. Someone leaked it. There's a huge news, uh, news van with the big dish on top driving, mm -hmm. trying to for the Branch Davidians and David Koresh. They, they see people on a bike. Excuse me, do you know where the Branch Davidians are in the compound? Yeah, they're up ahead. What's going on? ATF's doing a raid there. Those people were relatives of David Koresh. They were Branch Davidians. Cool. David Koresh went over to an undercover agent that was inside the compound and says, I now know you're an undercover agent for ATF. Let your guys know. I know you're coming. You can leave. Wow. That's him leave. You can leave. And in fact, he was an undercover agent. 
okay, what does this have to do with this this whole case with John Oki? Okay. <clears throat> when we get a position of power, we can get smug, or we have a belief we have power. Casey Anthony, another yeah. person mm. thought she was power because she was pretty, right? In my opinion, got away with murder because she was pretty. Mm -hmm. So if you have a position of power, I want to break out what happens when we lie or we get caught in yeah. a difficult situation. A person who has a perception of power really has power. And by the way, you at home also have a position of power, and I'll explain how. And when you lie about this particular thing, you do the same thing that we're seeing Jen McCabe and what I think the, some of the key players in this um, situation where I believe I do believe they're setting up uh, Karen Reed. In a position of power, we focus on the rewards, not the consequences. The everyday mm -hmm. liar focuses on what? The consequences. So they get nervous, they get dressed to impress, they may overcompensate uh, and be, you know, get a haircut, you know, braid their hair a certain way because they're trying to yeah. convince, right? yeah. so they go overboard because they're so nervous. Person of power focuses on the rewards, not the consequences. Person of power has an increase in cognitive thinking, which means one, one thing I tell you doesn't work, I come up with another one really quick, really quick. Oh yeah, we, uh, what, a week or two later, now all of a sudden they find the broken glass from the, the headlight. Oh yeah, here's why. Person of oh, power has, you don't believe it, they'll come up with another answer. Increase in cognitive thinking. Everyday liar, decrease in cognitive thinking. Hmm. Person of power has an increase in positive emotions. So they can be in flip flops on the step of the top steps of the courthouse. Yeah. You know, they can call 911 acting like, you know, laissez faire, like this isn't a big deal. There's no sense of panic. Why? Because they have a perceived belief, they have a position of power. And the last thing is that they have a decrease in cortisol. So if you have a position of power, you have a family or family connection to law mm -hmm. enforcement, you think they have you back, you might yeah. have, just like we have Kavanaugh, you in those moments, increase in happiness, focus on the reward, not the consequences, decrease in cortisol, cortisol and increase in cognitive thinking. When one answer doesn't work, you come up with another, right? We have these two scenarios. Mm -hmm. You at home. So we see this with, with Jen McKay. When you, you at home, when you, if you tell your kids, if your kids are around, put this podcast on pause. You oh, know. no, they're not around. No, they're at school. Right. Don't worry. They're not Don't your worry. kids, the people listening. People the listening. People listening. Sorry. I was like, wait, what? No, my if kids are. Your kids happen to be, first of all, they shouldn't be listening to this. But okay. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. No kids listening. Tell your kids that there's a Santa Claus and an Easter oh. bunny. And your kids say to you, mom, we can't go to Graham and Poppy's because they don't have a fireplace. How is Santa going to get in? We can't go there for Christmas. How's Santa get in? What do you do? You slap on a smile, increase in positive emotion, decrease in cortisol. You have an increase in cognitive thinking. You come up with some bullshit answer and you go, oh, just like Santa, you know, um, makes the reindeers fly. We can throw, you know, he throws right. magic seeds around grandma and poppy's house and it'll float up in the air and Santa comes underneath. Your kid doesn't buy it. You slap that smile still on. You have another answer. No, I didn't want to say anything, but Santa can shrink down the size of a keyhole. He comes through the keyhole, <laughs> pops up, the presents get big. Your kid doesn't buy it. Right. Now, right. now what? Still smiling, still decreasing cortisol, still have an increase in cognitive thinking. Now you go, okay, don't say anything. I'm going to unlock the door so mm. Santa can come in. And I'm going to put a note, Santa, please lock the door when you leave. Don't tell Graham and Bobby. Boom. Your kids believe it. You have the smile. Yeah. You're cavalier. You might, you might call your friends and be like, guess what? I came up with a good one. My kid didn't believe it, but I said the house can flow. I've never yep. said that before. The old gaslight in your own kids. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I believe when you see this casual look, and they don't care because they think it's in the bag. If they had a little bit respect for the court, if they had a little bit respect for John O'Keefe, there is a man who is dead here. A little bit of respect. Right. You're not going to be coming. Listen, I'm from Boston. I wear sweatshirts all the time. I've thrown mm -hmm. some jewelry here for our hello. You know, there's a yeah. time place. Do you know how to read the room? But when people feel that they're invincible, they come in decreasing cortisol. Yes. And that, I guess that's definitely, um, that was in my head. Like so, a man is dead. Um, maybe wear something a little bit better than flip-flops because it does give this smug, I can do whatever I want here. Cause nothing's going to matter in the end because I do have this under control or somebody I know has this under control. Uh, by the way, not only is a man dead, a fellow, a, a law enforcement officer. So when you come from a law enforcement family, there's a sense of camaraderie there Yeah, and you see it when someone dies in law enforcement, they lower the flag half mass. I mean, it is a big deal here mm -hmm. in DC. We have a memorial for fallen soldiers, fallen law enforcement officers. This is a big deal. And you know, where are the cops? Let me, and it's funny, like 
Fox saying, fine, if Karen Mead didn't do it, we're going to find out who did. It's yeah. funny. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I was just going to say that, what Janine just said. Like, where is the press conference? You know, why is there not a press conference? I mean, there's a press conference for everything now. There was no press conference that night. There was no, like, we're going to find out who did this. There was no press conference, you know, a couple hours later or when Karen was charged. Why, if Karen Reed didn't do this, we will find out who killed John O'Keefe. There was none of that. It's so odd. It's so odd. And I said to Sean today on the phone, I said to Sean today on the phone when we were talking, getting ready for a show on Thursday, I said, Sean, listen, I never went by 34 Fairview at night. I took a ride by, by there about a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, took a ride by there. Never been by there at night. Been during the day a million times. I went by there at night. I have video, but I never posted it. I said, tell me, Sean, if you ever looked at that house and you look at the basement floor, that little window, the little window that's down in the basement, I said, Sean, you got to tell me. They weren't down in that basement looking out the window. He said, you know they were. You know they were. I said they had to have been. It had been the perfect vantage point to what was going on on the outside. To look and be under the cloak and the cover of darkness. To look out that window. I said, Sean, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They were looking right out that window in the basement watching everything. If someone yeah. did it. Yeah. Someone did it. And if it wasn't Karen, like we will search every stone to find out who killed our friend or who you'd killed think. our comrade. No, you'd think. And I wasn't, you know, we're having a conversation. Yeah. So I'll just bring this Good up. Point, um, Nami. But, and it, I don't know if this can be taken fact as factually conclusive, but I do have a friend uh, who is from Canton and their uncle kind of mentioned, like, you know, uh, why was there not more people at his funeral <clears throat> that were law enforcement? Why were there not? And and I asked around and I heard the same thing uh, from, from other sources. There weren't a ton of people there um, that, you know, worked for the Canton police or even the state police. And I thought that was really shocking because that makes me scratch my head. Like, what is going on that not more uh, fellow officers were there? Well, even Karen Reed says, listen, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who has something bad to say about Kevin o uh, John O'Keefe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he was a nice guy. You know, he was a nice guy. He seems and like it. <laughs> where, where, where's everybody? Where's everybody? Listen, we're looking in, in, in body language. You're looking for when something is incongruent. And when something is incongruent, then you say that's suspicious. That's odd. You know, so mm. uh, that phone call is it, it's a 911 where Jen McCabe is really calm. And we hear Karen Reed like freaking out is an anomaly. It is odd. At the very least, we should be hearing, and I don't know, Jen McKay, but at the very least, we should be, she should be panicking, like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm like, what? Yeah, I, yeah, that's what you know, I would I mean, have thought. I totally would have thought that. This is not a first aid class where you're learning, Annie, Annie, are you okay? You, girl in pink glasses, call 911. Yeah. Right. Like, this is, this is a real crime. I mean, Panic. If you've ever been in a room, even when someone has really passed, yeah. it is, it is, it is a scary thing in that moment to find someone who is dead or to be there while someone dies like it is not a calm pausing phone call Can't think about that actually it's the oddest thing I i'm gonna tell you right now uh back in the summer late at night i have my two windows behind me here okay um all of a sudden fire trucks and police cars and sirens going everywhere lights going everywhere right i jump up run to my window and look out three houses over there's a house on fire i ran downstairs to see what was going on there was multiple people out in the street so you're gonna tell me all these cruisers show up you have a dead body on your lawn and you're not concerned about that first thing i would be out there going i don't know how they got there like what is going on it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense Okay. Um, oh, playing through. Yeah, you're right. I can only imagine being in a room with when it's someone who peacefully left this earth that it sounds absolutely terrifying. Um, well, the last thing right? I, I just want to bug you about, uh, it's the Nightline interview. I think it's our natural instinct. I think it's our human instinct. When we sense, 
when we sense something is wrong, uh, I know with me, it's just my personality. I want to go to it to help. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, perfect example, the fire. I want to go out and see what is going on. I think it's our now, even if it's not to help, it's just the natural instinct to go on. Wow. There's, you know, how often do you ever have fire trucks in your neighborhood? You know what I mean? So there's a fire truck in your neighborhood. You hear it. The siren's going off. I want to know what the hell's going on. I'm either going to look out the window and go, oh, geez, or I'm going to run downstairs and go, what the hell is going on? You know, how often do you hear, uh, you know, police cars or whatever, ambulances directly in your neighborhood? So, you know, yeah, to me, I would be running outside going, what is going on? Like, what, what is this? So it's just, it's very odd. No one came well, out. And I have always been under the impression besides Scott Peterson, okay, that a lawyer wouldn't necessarily let their client do an interview if they believed that they were guilty because people, you know, the American public could see it, right? But then there's people like you who are experts in their field. And so I was like, well, you know, besides Scott Peterson, who I obviously I feel is very guilty and gave this terrible interview to Diane Sawyer, um, I feel like Karen Reed, I mean, they really truly must believe in her innocence if they let her do that. And okay. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and let's, okay. let's put context. It's, it's, it's not just Scott Peterson, right? We had Drew Peterson. Yes. Drew Peterson yes. killed his, his uh, missing wife. We still have never found her. Right. Uh, his third wife, Kathleen Salvio was, was brought up from the grave and, and he was found guilty of killing her. He was yeah. the first cop on the scene. She died in the bat, bride, drive out. He couldn't do enough interviews. Like he was going out to the press and, and bringing them coffee and a bite to eat. Right. Yeah. Pop. Yeah. Pop. I, th- I think this is just the one that sticks out like in my head. Uh, that was just so right. guilty well, listen, before the trial, but yeah, most likely yeah. I'm not a therapist, most likely a narcissist. Right. So we get these narcissistic people that will go out and do these interviews. Let me tell you about Karen. Reen. She doesn't have law enforcement on her side. Yeah. Karen. Reen. She's like a blue collar kid from Boston. Right. She doesn't have the, the big giant ego right? She doesn't have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of law enforcement or legal people in her family that are, have got her back no matter what. She doesn't have endless funds. She doesn't come from a a huge family of a ton of money. So it makes no sense for Karen Reed, if in fact she was guilty to be doing these interviews. Mm -hmm. And if you listen, so there's something out there, which I like better than body language. It's called statement analysis. How about this? How about the motive? What would the motive be for Karen Reed to kill John? Now, I know what they're trying to do in the media, and I know what they're trying to do with these court filings to say, oh, Karen was the scorned lover and was making out with Higgins and doing this and doing that. And she was angry at John, uh, what he did supposedly over in the Caribbean when they were on vacation together. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? What is the motive? What is the motive in all of this? It's not a life insurance policy. They're not married. Uh, it's not some big, it's not like John has $20 million in his bank account and she's trying to get it because he recently put her on his will. Uh, what is the motive here? What would be the motive? They're going to try to chalk this up to some scorned lover because she might have kissed someone or they're just making a bunch of shit up. This is a bunch of shit. How about this? How about. Maybe let's put it, let's turn this thing around. What doesn't it say that Higgins and Karen are together and Higgins didn't try to put a move on Karen? He's trying to say that Karen put a move on him. How about it's the other way around? Maybe he tried to make out with her. Maybe Karen rejected him and said, Hey, back off, buddy. So, how do we even know that's the truth? You know, as I sit here, I go, What is what is the what is the motive? What is the more? It's not like it's not like she's going to get all this money from, from John. Oh, I'm going to sit back in this pile of money. I mean, it's, it's none of that. It's none of that. And that's what I want to talk to on Sean on Thursday about Sean. Let's talk about the motive. What is the motive here? What is the motive? What is the motive? And if you listen to Karen Reed's statements, she is very clear. You know, um, there was, uh, and she calls these, she, says, she flat out says, I'm being framed. She says, law enforcement's doing this. They're, they're framing mm-hmm. me, right? Mm-hmm. I, she even says, I know who really did it. I know who did it. I know. Right. So oh, of course, this is unlikely probably. to happen. If you think about politicians, right? I'm not even talking about murder here. Let's think about some politicians. 
you have Wiener, the whole Wiener gate. I don't know if you remember this, right? He tweeted a picture of himself with an, yes. an erection <laughs> under, age, underage yes. girl in Chicago, among many other young women. Eventually ends up getting arrested and going to jail. Um, his now ex-wife worked for Hillary Clinton. Okay. Yes. So we got the whole Wiener gate, massive narcissist, big giant ego. Okay. He says, oh, someone broke into my Twitter and someone must have done this. What he didn't say is I did not send a picture of myself to a girl in Seattle underage. That is not me. I did not do it. Someone is lying. Someone is framing me. I did not do this and name the this, right? Without mm -hmm. diminishing of what's saying. Yeah. For me, it comes right out of the gate, right out of the gate. And you know what? I think I know it's going to be turned into a movie. You, you can see. <laughs> If, first of all, she was under, um, you know, most likely I believe she lied about how much she had. She right. said she had four. The, the the bar said it was more like eight. Yeah. Um, eight or nine. And um, I could see someone getting there and be like, oh my God, did I, did I do this? Did I hit him? I like, said, oh I've said that too. I've said that too. Yes. You know, why? you know, and that's what I talk about too. And I've said this a, a lot on my streams. So if you're in a, in a crazy situation and you just found out that your uh, boyfriend is dead and someone's at, you know, saying, Hey, and you know, why is it always this? It's always Karen when in the media, the way they portray this and the way the Commonwealth is trying to portray this, that it's a statement. I hit him. I hit him. Have you ever thought of this? And I always refer back to the, my cousin, Vinny, my cousin, Vinny, I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. He's asking a question. He's asking a question in the sense of you're trying to blame uh, him in My Cousin Vinny. And he's like, I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. How about if it was Karen saying, uh, you're telling me I hit him? I hit him? You're saying that I hit him? You know, it's always a statement, the Commonwealth. It's, Commonwealth's always trying to say, she said he, she hit him. She hit him. And I always go back to the, to the uh, statement on those courtroom steps. The statement that Karen made on those courtroom steps, I believe it was in the May hearing. She comes out and she said, I was covered in his blood. I, I was the only one that was there trying to save his life. Well, I got a couple of questions about that. If you're covered in his blood, and he was supposed to be out there six for six hours. Then how would you have his blood all over you? His blood would be frozen at that point. So that tells me that John wasn't out there as long as the Commonwealth is trying to say. Because we know it's cover up, big cover up, big cover up. Self. Extroverts think out loud. Introverts think internally. Mm -hmm. So I've ex I'm a, I'm an extrovert introvert, but my um, oldest son, he's 18. He um, has some learning differences. And he's an introvert, mm -hmm. and extroverts he loves us because we help bring out his personality. But he doesn't understand why sometimes extroverted people say things they probably shouldn't have said. And I said, because a true extrovert, his name's Angus, a true extrovert, Angus, they formulate what they're thinking while talking. And yeah. so Karen Reed, any of the extroverts out there that are listening to this or thought about this case, probably have said to themselves, holy shit, that could have been me. I could see nice. it rhyming. Like, I was drinking last night. Did I and how about this? And how about this? Let's just let's just give it the the simplest answer ever. If you're not enjoying your time with someone that you're in a relationship with, then you just break up with them. You just break up with them. That's it. Do that? Did I hit him? Yes. And, and not knowing how, I think that's really important to say because how are you? How are you supposed to predict? what the hell is going to come of that one statement oh. that listen you probably she probably slept for two hours she's the booze is wearing off whatever again i am so big on blaming myself for everything even deep down when i know i didn't do it and i don't know the purpose of that janine if i want someone to say oh it's not your fault and make me feel better i don't know why i do it but i am the first to blame myself so you saying that right there, that definitely could have been me where I'm like, I know I didn't do it, but did I do it? Like, I know I'm I didn't. wondering See? why we're, it's I'm not talking about. about in the court. And if it is, maybe I missed it because there's a ton of science on that extroverts. And if we can look at Karen Reed, clearly more extroverted than introverted. By the right, way, we, right. we all have extroversion and introvert. I, this is a specialty of mine. So I'm, I'm a, it's called movement pattern analysis. We move in a pattern that can be analyzed mm -hmm. and how we move our body connects to exactly. things like how we make decisions, how we interact with people, these interaction styles. Good point, Maz. Yeah. A great point. And if you look at someone like Karen Reed, 
she's indicating even with her movements and I could tell you what they are if you're interested that connects to extroverts versus introverts if she didn't care about John there wouldn't have been the multiple phone calls that night looking for him and just like Maz has said she wouldn't have got back in her car and went back there and why was it that she was the one on that 911 call the most panicked out of everybody that's not acting that's generally inside her you can hear it on that 911 call. If not, the fucking Karen Reed should get the Oscar for the fucking millennium. I'm telling you. Because that is truth inside her heart. You can hear it on that 911 call. You can hear it. And wait until we hear the actual 911 call when we actually hear the clarity in it. We'll be able to hear it a lot more clearer. I'm telling you. Most haunting thing about that recorded call. The most haunting thing that I cannot get out of my head is hearing those windshield wipers going back and forth. It's haunting. It's truly haunting in that moment. All right, let's finish this one up, about another 17 minutes. And, he, and it might surprise you, the movements. Some of them, I can give you a handful. Yeah, of. no, just give us one, an example I'll you, of I'll one. I'll tell you one, okay? So a true extrovert, okay? okay. A true extrovert, when, uh, which I'm an extrovert introvert. So I'm a true super extrovert, introvert. When they lean forward, a true yeah. extrovert, okay? When they lean forward, they will tend to more often than the other one. I'll show you the difference. An extrovert will lean forward slowly as if I'm telling you a secret. So I might, I'm sitting here, Lauren, and I go, hey, Lauren, let me tell you something else. Yeah. I was talking about. And I'm leaning forward, okay? Slowly. It's called, it's called decelerating. So I'm leaning forward slowly, decelerating and advancing. Decelerating and advancing happening at the same exact time mm -hmm. is what we often see extroverts do. Now let's look at introverts. And I have a lot of them in my life. Some of my best friends are introverts. Now this might, you might think if you saw this movement, you would, you would probably think these are the extroverts, but it's wrong. It's backwards. Okay. And an extra, an introvert, when they lean forward, mm -hmm. they lean forward with speed. So they accelerate in advance. And I'll show you what it looks like. Ready? Lauren, you and I are sitting together or you, whoever's listening at home, we're sitting together at a restaurant and I lean forward really quickly and I go, oh, guess what else happened? Hmm. And when I do that, what does it Jerky. make? Me? But when I lean forward back, you back up. Yeah. The people yeah. are not watching this. I'm telling you what Lauren just did. Lauren just jumped back because I was like so aggressive and so- Has anybody in the chat not heard the recorded 911 call? Has anybody not heard it? Let me know in the chat because I'll be happy to play it so everybody can understand and hear it. If you have not heard it, let me know. I will play it. Uh, all right, let's keep playing this though. Fast. I, I accelerated in advance. Yes. So if I'm saying, oh, guess who else I talked to? You're like, who? You back up. Yeah. So our body movement is connected. It's called movement DNA. We have yeah. movement DNA or behavioral fingerprints, we'll call it. And it's 99% accurate. Harvard University's done studies on movement pattern analysis. The Naval War College, no one's heard of it because to get mm -hmm. profiled, it takes several hours. We yeah. look at your movement. We don't care what you say. This is why I'm I saying if you watch it. Karen Reed with the sound off, get through this you can first. see her body is organically moving as she's talking and sharing, which is connected with authenticity. I went through and actually enhanced it so you can hear it a little bit better. So we'll play that version of it. Um, that's the only thing I've done to the audio is I've just enhanced it, haven't edited it, nothing like that. Um, all right, let's get through this another 15 minutes and I will play it at the end. I will play it at the end of the show. Wow. I mean, this is, this why is no one really... talking about no. extroverts? If I was on the defense, if I was on the defense yeah. side, I would be saying, first of all, let's bring on an expert that talks about what Karen Reed said there is, is very indicative of what an, an extrovert might say. Extroverts mm -hmm. think out loud. Yeah. This yeah. is why we get ourselves in trouble because we say stupid stuff. Introverts process what they're going to say. They're very deliberate on what they're going to share. As a matter of fact, um, well, I don't want to go down that path, but there's a lot to do. There's not just two interaction styles. There's two more, which are one's called neutral and one's called the ambivert. The ambivert is the combination. My okay. uh, couple of TED Talks. My next TED Talk will be on interaction styles. But I I'm telling you right now, if Karen Reed is found not guilty, I will be using her movements in my TED talk to show how do extroverts behave. I wow. will use her line where she said, hey, Mike, oh my God, did I do this? Did I kill yeah. you know, did I listen to him? Yeah. Because extroverts <clears throat> think out loud and her movements, even in the courtroom, are indicative of someone who's more extroverted.
Yeah. I mean, oh. I well, just, so I feel like when the trial actually begins, this should absolutely be brought up. And I would think Alan Jackson knows this. I mean, you, right. You would think he's yeah. a very talented and experienced uh, criminal defense attorney. So I think he would definitely bring this up. Um, but gosh, I, this is so helpful. I have to tell you, Janine, like, so, so great helpful. Podcast. I appreciate did a great you so job much. Um, oh, good, good. You know, if, yeah. if, if you get to try, you know, things that we want to look for that, and if you ever want me to ha- come back when we get to, that, yes. talk to those, thanks for having me. And I know I talk a lot. I have ADD, so I'm all over the place and I'm no, really it's good. It's good. I love, I love, I weigh in on a lot of these cr- cases and I've weighed in by the grace of God accurately where we have, you know, some people, everyone's like, that person's guilty, that person's guilty. And I'm like, no, I believe that there was a girl named Tiffany. She went to uh, Mexico on her honeymoon with her husband. She said three pirate ships came, shot her husband off the jet ski. He fell into the water and then she like drove off. And even yeah. people, experts in my world are like, she's a liar, liar, li- liars love the number three. They'll often use the number three. So yeah, like, yeah. Um, Right. And a couple, a couple things like she's a liar. Well, guess what? The main detective in that case, Tiffany Hartley, the main detective in that case was found beheaded and his head was put on the, the, the steps of the police station or his family's house that was investigating that, which was the MO of the pirates. And that was the day after I went on Fox news and I said, no one in my world in the detecting deception world believes she's innocent because she's changing her text too. And we do hear this, by the way, with Karen Reed. Sometimes she's talking in current tense and sometimes she's talking in past tense, yeah. which liars do. And so I think this does a disservice to Karen Reed and people in my world might look at her as, as lying because of this. However, some people, when they don't choose to believe it yet, right? Or if mm-hmm. they're Christian, they believe in an afterlife, the tenses will change because they still love them. So they'll talk in a current tense. And so that in and of itself is not enough. The reason I tell you about these cases is I've looked at people everyone's thought is guilty. And I've said, yeah. I believe innocent. well, bam, next day, someone's dead. I've looked at people who people, everyone thought was innocent. And I'm like, I don't believe them. I, uh, you know, some people thought Amber Heard was telling the truth. I got tons of hate on Amber Heard, you know, and really? uh, uh, tons, tons. Wow. I still get it because on TikTok, wow. all my videos went viral and the Amber Heard stuff, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of like, believe all women except Amber Heard. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I'm totally kidding. Um, no, that I can see that you want to believe women. Are you kidding me? I really want to believe women. I just, I couldn't really believe her either, but this is, yeah, this is what I want people to look for at home as this case continues to unveil. Right. Um, number one, shoulder shrugs, the shoulder shrug is uncertainty. So if we, if we see Karen Reed say something and she shrugs, it doesn't mean she's a liar, but it means mm-hmm. she's uncertain about something. If I was the interviewer, I would say, you know, what are you uncertain about? So be careful of taking one okay. body language and thinking they're telling the lie. The okay. other big one with Karen Reed, cause she's so expressive with her face. Yeah. Um, is I would definitely focus a lot on face and, and, um, there's so much happening in her face forehead that, that mouth, you know, that kissy lips coming out. Yep. Some people, some people will call that uh, like this lip compression, but it's not a compression. Compression is this. Mm-hmm. If I'm, if I make my lips disappear, yeah. and this is what I talk about. If you do a slight lip compression, do it for me, Lauren. Okay. Nice and soft though. You're doing heavy, hardcore. Oh. Just do it really for a second. Go like this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your lips disappear. So everyone at home, if you're listening, go, uh uh-huh. And make Mm -hmm. your lips. I love your hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And the lips disappear lightly. So when they lightly pressed, we're annoyed with people. So imagine like I drop F-bombs left and right, right? I can tell when I'm annoying someone because I'm I'm saying something I swear. And the person goes, "Uh uh-huh. And their lips slightly close. Like, okay, non-swearing person, got it. Listen, I am not going to talk to you. I am like so afraid right now that you're analyzing every move I make. And like, now that I'm thinking <laughs> about you, like how have my reactions been when you've been speaking? Because I'm really freaked out that you're going to be like, you're a fake ass bitch. No, I'm just no, kidding. No, I love you. You're <laughs> so authentic. Your body's moving. You're so authentic. This is so fun. The big one is if the lips disappear big time, I like to say when we don't like what we see or hear, our lips disappear. So as we're watching Karen Reed, Listen to what is being said in the courtroom when her lips will disappear. So I'm just going to stop this for a second. Um, I just want to read this text. Um,
my dad is watching my show tonight. And um, I haven't talked to my dad in a long time. But he sent me a text and said, Brian Higgins clocked in at the CP uh, Canton Police Department at 1.30 a.m. on 129.22. Wouldn't he still be drunk? Why hasn't he looked into more? Lauda O'Keefe was decrystallized by Karen's warm breath until she gave mouth to mouth, and that might be how uh, nobody thought of that, just saying. So I want to... Um, Dad, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And this is what you've been missing. We've done a lot of great things here. And um, we need to have a conversation soon. All right, let's play through this. Here and they will because we see this like kissy lips. We're also going to see her lips disappear. Also, yeah. pay attention to her eyes. When we are not eyes slightly narrow a little bit, this is apprehension, concern, doubt. The brain immediately when we have apprehension, where I got that brain concern, from? Our eyes immediately start to squint. This is mm. increased stress, anxiety. This is where someone's feeling threatened. So we can start to look at Karen Reed's face now. I, I pulled that. You know, there's another one she does, which yeah. is. When we grab our chin, we're about to win. And this is indicative of <laughs> when. So wow. I'll show you the Karen Reed here. And you people can Google it at home. But um, here's Karen grabbing her chin in the courthouse. Okay. Uh, this is indicative of, of confidence. So when we grab our chin, we're about to win. We see a lot of. Um, I always grab my chin. I, I, well, I don't know if I grab it, but I'm always like, I'm always resting like that. I'm always doing that. I, but what is, I, okay. That's fairly interesting. It's a All sign right. of confidence. It's a thinking right. pose. And now to play devil's advocate, people who don't believe in body language and all this stuff, right? They're gonna yeah. Go, well, Kavanaugh did that and he was found guilty of killing his wife and kid. Right. Mm -hmm. or, or Scott Peterson did that. Yes. Oh, anyone true. Scott move. Peterson did do that. I know and that so case better. Yeah. This move, it sends the message of confidence. Here's the difference in body language, whether it's Karen Reed or the Scott Petersons or, who, you know, Michael Jackson, whoever you're thinking yeah. of. We're looking for how do they normally behave when before everything starts to get heated up? You know, what did you do earlier in the day? How did you meet John? We're trying to get the baseline of, you know, in non-threatening yeah. questions to see when the baseline changes and you're looking for clusters. <laughs> Although Karen Reed does this chin grab, which is a sign of confidence, she, her body language movement is also congruent. She's also immediately calling out police. Who does that? In a city where you get a famous stand-up comedian that leaves is like, yeah, Canton police is messed up, man. So you, the last thing you're going to do is accuse the police of doing something. If Karen Reed did not do it and she thought someone else did it, she'd be like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I know it wasn't me. I came in at six in the morning. No one was trying to help him but me. That's all I know. But mm -hmm. she's calling out the cops. Why? They're supposed to be his, his comrades. Yeah. His comrades. Why is she doing that? She's taking a big risk by doing that. And I can see how the people might be divided because, you know, you want to have law enforcement's back. But. Many, many movies have been made on reality about cops yep. who played some evidence. That and I, I know it's really sad. And unfortunately, our society, we <laughs> end up spotlighting the bad cops over the good cops. So my dad said, uh, put yourself together, do your show. Uh, great job. Call you when I can uh, on the side. <laughs> He's just telling me to put myself together. <laughs> because um that's just what happens we need you know it's it's sad but yeah you rarely see an article or a news segment about a cop doing right uh or doing something good and it's just so sad but um, if you want to look for if karen reed is hiding something or if you're in a meeting or you think your significant other is cheating on you mm -hmm. and you want a body language move other than a shoulder shrug when they say i'm not cheating on you but they might not be but their best friend might be cheating on his wife so you have that shrug because you're you're getting closer to a secret he's keeping. It's not that he's cheating on you, but he knows his best friend's cheating, right? Oh. So we don't know what the catalyst is. But here's a big one. You you stick your tongue inside your cheek. So push your tongue inside your cheek, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can do this as playfulness, like I you know like I cause some trouble. Like hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. But here's what it is. The tongue inside the cheek is nervous tension. And it's usually someone's hiding something or they want to get away with something. Oh. And all the videos I've been watching, I'm not just looking for congruency. And if she's telling the truth, Karen Reed, I'm looking for, are there indicators, body language indicators that are often used by liars? Mm -hmm. And it's not adding up for me. I'm seeing the positive the truthful indicators, the congruency, the integrated movements. And I'm not seeing things like a shoulder shrug out of place. I'm not seeing that, yeah. in, that tongue pushing yeah. on the inside of the, the mouth where I'm trying to get away with something. I just don't see it. And wow. again, I think that it's a sad situation. I, you know, I, my curiosity is when does federal law enforcement get involved and tear apart? I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't put it past my dad that he knows a lot of these people because my dad is very well connected with a lot of people in and around this area. Uh, I, I wouldn't put it past them. And now it's, it's opened that door to curiosity. I'm sure he's got lots of stories to tell. And I'm sure, probably pretty sure knowing his reputation and the people that he talks to around, 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 around that my dad probably knows a lot of inside information. So I think that we're going to have a, a very interesting conversation. Um, if you just missed it, um, my dad texted me during the show, added some commentary to the show. It was a big surprise that he was watching my show. My dad and I have not talked in a very long time. And I want to let my father know I care about you very much. I think about you every single day and uh, we need to have a talk. I need to know who you are. I need to know about you. And I think it's time to do that. I want to know everything. I want to know everything. All right, let's finish this up. This whole entire police station. Well, whole... they they are involved. I mean, as per the last hearing, they are involved, and um, the defense has until Monday to Monday. give their yeah their their uh, motion to to push everything back because they claim they you know they are not going to be able to look through all these pages of documents. So, um, yeah, it's it's interesting, and like you said, I think this will definitely be a movie. But Janine, where can people find you if they want to follow you across social media? Yeah, well, my last name's Driver, Janine Driver. So you could just throw me in Google and, and things might pop up. I also have a YouTube channel. I used to do uh, Celebrity Lie Detector Live, where I weigh in in cases like this, like the Justice yeah. Small case, or different cases. And you can see R. Kelly, and you can see Jean Benet Ramsey case. You can mm -hmm. see um, what I said over there. It's a great free way to work with us um, over okay. here. I'm on a company called the Body Language Institute. And I have a, a TikTok channel. Um, actually, what is, do you know my TikTok channel? I think that's it might be Lion Tamer or that you have a couple that's, or that's Lion Tamer, I believe. Well, I'm lighting um, up my TikTok channel today. I'm talking not only about this case, but I'm going to be talking about um, this TV reality uh, show. Oh, it's at Body Language Institute. Is TikTok. Okay. App, I'm going to okay. talk about Love is Blind too. I'm doing some Love is Blind stuff today. There's something called Sue, strategic use of evidence. We use a law enforcement. And if you think someone's lying and you have a little bit of evidence, you know, that great Kenny Rogers song, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. <clears throat> be careful of showing your cards too early. So I'm going to be talking Ooh. about that. And the best place is on Substack. I have a newsletter called In the Driver's Seat, and that's going to be my new hub. And everything yeah. in the driver's seat, all my articles where I give research for people who love more data and want to go deeper. And then I talk about how yeah. do you use this in your personal or professional life? We're looking at this case, right? This is a yeah. matter of case, but we can learn a lot by looking at this case on how to use these same tools we're talking about here today in your personal life, whether it's with your kids or, you know, from the boardroom. To I've the already picked up so much. Are you kidding me? I, like I said, I'm, I'm a little paranoid now about my reactions and my responses with people in life. But um, I think maybe maybe that's a good thing for me. Like maybe I'll be more um, in tune with myself and how yeah. I'm reacting. Um, well, you have homework, Lauren. And yeah. Homework <laughs> and the people at home. All right. Whoever's listening, you all both have homework. And here's your homework. When you see someone talking to you and they lean forward and tell you something really quickly, mm -hmm. I want you to stop if you know that person well and ask yourself, does this person go to the movies by themselves? Does this person prefer to shop alone? Does, would this person go on a vacation by themselves? Yeah. Is this person more of an introvert? Um, there are three different areas where someone could be introverted, which is gathering research, deliberating your decision, and then executing. So the one I gave you, there's six moves. I've only given you two, but people who lean forward quickly, 
like we see Karen Reed do. These, I mean, not do, she leans forward slowly. So yeah. people who lean forward quickly, these are people who are more loners. They are very private. They're very introverted. When you take your company picture, they're the people that are never around for the picture. They're like, I'm out of here. You're all going out to lunch. They're like, I'm going to go and eat on my own and I'll see you later. Watch yeah. their body language. They will lean forward in a meeting. They will do it fast. They will do it quickly. And it'll push you back a smidge. And you'll be like, that makes sense. Holy crap. They yeah, are. no, I am. That That is really good homework. I, I honestly, I'm taking all of this and I'm processing it. Uh, Janine, I will be hitting you up again soon. I really, I really appreciate your time and all of your insight. You've been amazing. So thank you thank so you. much. Oh my God. Thank you, Lauren. I love both your podcasts and I <laughs> wish you nothing but the best success. I can't wait to get billions and billions of followers. Oh my. Okay. So we're just going to, a lot of pleasantries at the end. So I would say, you know, go check out Lauren's podcast, The Outlier. I want to thank Lauren so much for letting me, allow me to do this tonight. And um, tomorrow night, uh, Janine will be on Sean's channel. I'll drop the link to that. But before we go, we're going to play the 911 call. And I also, I just want to explain, uh, Sean and I kind of talked tonight. I didn't know, he didn't know that Janine was supposed to come on my show next Monday. I didn't know he, she was going tomorrow. This is a great precursor to what you're going to see tomorrow on Sean's channel. And then later down the road, hopefully the three of us can get together and we can do a stream together uh, if this goes to court and analyze some of the, the body language inside the courtroom. Um, if you missed it, uh, I, I have to say this is a very, very, I, it kind of, I don't know. I was just, uh, it, I didn't, I had to double check the text. Um, but I, uh, I have not, uh, uh talked to my, my biological father in, in quite some time. And he actually texted me and he's watching the show live. Um, and I'll read what he texted me. I'll just let everybody know. It's some really good points that he brought up. He said, Brian Higgins clocked in at Canton Police Department at 1.30 a.m. on 129.22. Wouldn't he still be drunk? He said, why isn't he looked at more? He said, Blood on Keith was decrystallized by Karen's warm breath when she was giving him mouth to mouth. That might be how uh, she got the blood on him. Nobody thought of that. Just saying. Uh, and then he told me, like, had the emotional moment to put myself together and continue with the show and that we'll we'll talk so uh <laughs> that's funny uh uh here with the two thank you so much since this is all uh currency of the realm this is all currency of the realm uh yeah it just i had to double check the text and uh really great moment so thank you and again i'll drop the link to uh Lauren's podcast. So thank you so much for doing that. Make check, make sure to check out her podcast. She has many, many episodes over there. She actually has one that she did with our friend, Jennifer Coffendaffer. So I think I might review that one as well. And we can play through that on one of these nights here. I think that'd be really great. Um, and get everybody's perspective on that. And then also, uh, let me play that 911 call for you all that haven't heard this. I do want to put a warning out there. There is uh, a trigger warning. It's a very emotional call. If it if it's too much to listen to, I don't uh, you know suggest to listen to it. But we'll play through this. It's enhanced. I have enhanced the video, uh, the sound on the video to make it a lot clearer. And then before I leave, I will drop the link for Sean's stream tomorrow, where Janice will be on there live. Please go and check that out. Tell Sean I sent everybody over. And of course, Sean from the Gulf will be on my show on Thursday, and we will fully investigate. Uh, we we'll talk about Karen Reed. And for all of you that don't know in the chat, uh, Sean is an ex-federal DEA agent. And uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about here. Uh, all right, let's play through this. And then we're going to wrap this one up. Um, yes, I need someone to see 34 feet. Um, 34 feet of road is getting out. There's a man passed out in the snow. Yeah, yeah I don't know why he did that. I can put that. Okay, I know. Where's 
blankets. I don't see blankets, Terry. So the reason you're not hearing the 911 is because that was Karen uh, calling John's phone. And then it went down to his voicemail. So that's the voicemail off John's phone. So you're not hearing it. So J Karen's phone dropped inside the SUV. And that's what you're hearing. So we haven't heard the full 911 call. But... I mean, can you tell me that Karen is acting there, that there's not sincerity in her voice, that she's not panicked to the point of going out of her mind? And then you listen to Jen McCabe, how calm she is. Oh, there's a man out in the snow, trapped under the snow. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. So my friends, I'm going to leave everybody with that tonight. Um, I will be off tomorrow. I'm going to leave Sean's link for tomorrow with uh, Janine. That will be down in the chat. You can set your reminder. And that stream is set for 7 p.m. tomorrow. So please go over, show Sean some love. I'll be in the chat uh, hanging out and showing some love to his stream. And then Sean will be on with me on Thursday night. And I'll give you, uh, let me drop the link to that so you can set your reminder. I know Thursday's normally not the night I do, um, but it just worked out for the both of us. Let me get to, I'm trying to shut the stupid banner off. Here we go. And I'm going to give you the link for tomorrow. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Thursday. 
Sean will be on with me on Thursday, and that link will be here. I'll drop it in the chat. So thank you again. Uh, we'll start at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday. Sean will be 7 p.m. tomorrow, and uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate everybody coming uh, over here tonight and checking this out again. If you if you found value in the stream, uh, it's going to be a, brief, a great precursor to Sean's show tomorrow, and I'm excited to have him on Thursday. Him and I had a good about 20-minute conversation tonight. It's really great to talk to him and uh, get his perspective. And I said, Sean, open platform. Let's hang out for like two hours. We'll go wild on this case, and, uh, and I, I'd love to hear what you have to say. So all good stuff. Thank you all so much for being here. Thursday night will be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, thank you all for being here. We had a pretty emotional moment tonight. Uh, emotional moment tonight. Uh, my dad texted in. He was watching the show. Um, I'm smiling inside. It's pretty cool. And uh, he added a, a great value to the conversation. So thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. And uh, we need to touch base soon, man. It's been uh, it's been too long. I need to know about you. I need to know who you are. I never asked you that question. I need to start asking these questions. And I want to hear about everything. We need to, we need to talk. Okay. I'm going to wrap up the stream, everybody. Thank you all so much. Uh, get some sleep. Get some rest. Whatever you do, I'll be back here Thursday night uh, with Sean. I'm not going to do tomorrow night. I will not do. Um, what is tomorrow? Damn, it's Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday night. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a show on Wednesday. Probably not because we're going to do the Thursday, but I'm trying to keep it to Monday, Wednesday, Sundays and sprinkle in a Friday and Saturday here and there, but ah, whatever, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I am, however, looking on Wednesday night at a uh, studio space. So I'll keep you all posted on that. Hopefully it goes well. All right. I'm out of here, everybody. Have a great night. I'm going to play the long intro outro tonight. Bye. Thanks. Appreciate you. But it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at six in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. That was like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Getting into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more from the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Didn't think some minds of a wicked no alibi We thought of it up, now we ain't thought of it up Why do we get up, folks? I see how true crime go We go get living the show But then I'm not talking about it in the soul We could go to the new world No can't do it, y'all lie Could not do it, y'all lie We thought of it up, now we ain't thought of it up I ain't got it, no one in the world